good day and welcome back so we've been working through a number of things on the client side one piece thing at a time and so today we're going to be looking at the client side task DAO so that's item 2c on our long list of things so let's jump in and see you at the end of the video um, the next thing I said is there's a service here a task service we don't really need a a service um, and we don't need but we do need um, we're going to use a factory to implement our DAO so for the service I'm going to rename this the task service even though we don't really need it right now and I'm going to rename this file to I might actually delete this file it's pretty soon anyway but I'll keep it there for now and then I'll do rename this to task um, DAO and then in here I'm gonna call this task DAO okay now again one way to see how you should write your DAO is just go look at the to-do one and um, nice way to sort of cheat if you like and so um, oh that's not the service I don't want to look at this, the back-end service I'm gonna close that um, the to-do to -do DAO which is here and I could copy it wholesale if I like but um, and so they actually implement their to do it's a, it's a factory but I put it in the servers directory but that's fine we also have a factory here and so we can essentially just copy all of this um, bam I'm gonna copy all this save me some type in uh, I'll go up to here I'm gonna say copy and I'm gonna paste this because it's gonna be pretty close right I will paste this and I'll go over it again even though we covered it before so for now um, let me close this and just focus on our DAO so our task DAO it's in checks the Q service if you remember the same Q service from angular is the, their promise library it allows you to create promises we, we practice that and the thing we're going to inject is a task model and when we want to use a task we're going to be able to do new on it um, so uh, we'll see that when we're ready to create a task for example here so we want to create a task we'll do new on it so um, if I had to do um, forward command search for to do and then replace it with and then I want to this says uh, match case this says match what match old words well I don't want to say match old words and I want to limit myself to only searching in the task DAO file so it, eh. I only want to search in this file but uh, here and then do task and here's where I want to do that replace so find and replace all references um, find and replace all references to this oh I don't want to do search and replace so it's trying to search wider than in files I don't want to do in files I just want to do in this file jeez ah, cancel um, include files Jesus uh, way more complex than I thought it would be I just want to files to include just want to include task dash dao dot j um, js okay and I do not want server oh my gosh it's including the server uh, I only want task this is turning out to be more than I want slash factory okay so let's see enter okay fine five occurrences so run this and replace 15 occurrences across one file which is what I want and there we go all right so just, whew, that was way too that took way too long I as well just typed it so anyway so we have task DAO and 
we ingest the queue service, we inject our task model, and we ingest our task resource. And then of course for the function, we have to accept these. these remember these are done here in this array, this long broader array for minimization, okay? So, okay, we take the task, that task resource, and then we say var task DAO is equals to this construction function I'm creating, which I don't put any properties in there, but I'm gonna add some function on it, prototype. So get all for task DAO, we can do an unsuccess function, and it's gonna be not to do's, but rather task. And let's see where the so out of task. Okay, task, and it's gonna be task. So our success function, when it's called with a set of tasks, what are we gonna do? We're gonna simply return it. But remember, if we this is gonna be called by our promise. So remember, a promise function, if it returns a value, it can return a value or not a promise, right? So you can change promises. So this is returned as a promise. So that's fine. Uh, we don't need to document that. We know that already. So I'm gonna take that out. Actually, let me leave the documentation. It doesn't hurt to keep that in there. All right. And so then here we return, this is when we use the queue service because if we have an error, then we return a promise that rejects our, on that error, okay? As opposed to a value. We could have returned the value error that we got, but return a promise that rejects that error. And then now what we return is this task resource. So we said task resource, make a query. So we call the query method on the task resource and then say, once that's returned, I want to create a promise from it. And so that, that's the promise on the task resource. This is not the queue library. This is the promise on the task resource. This is the only time we use the queue library to create a promise. But here we're saying, make a query and that object that you return, I want you to create a promise out of it. And I'm going to initialize that promise this way. When it's successful, call this then function, this success function. And then if there's an error, call my on error function. And then I return that old result, the promise that's created by task resource. And if we want, we can go back and take a look at our task resource, which is here. And we can see that the query method, or oh, we don't actually have a query method. So we either have to do our get. So which one is, um, is when we do get all on our, in our um, task DAO, which one do we really intend to call? Well, this is a get all function. So we need to call a function on our resource that does return an array. And so the only one that returns an array is this one here, this, this get method, as opposed to get by ID. So let's just change it. We can either call this method here, get query, or we can go back here and just say, we're actually calling get, okay? That's fine. Um, same thing with um, create. So on our DAO, we're gonna have a method called create task, which is gonna take a task object, okay? And then it's gonna check that it's an object, and it's gonna check that this object is an instance of a task, right? And then it's gonna also, since it's an instance of task model, it has this validate function, which we went through just now and talked about. This val is valid method um, on our task does this validation. And so if that is all good, it returns, if it is not good, it returns Q that reject new type error in valid task to be created, right? Which makes sense. And if it passed that, then we have a success function that says, hey, take this, whatever is returned when you successfully create a task on the back end, you're gonna have a return value called task. And I want you to use that object, whatever object come back from the back end, and create a new task with it. Remember, it's gonna be a JSON object. So take that JSON object, and the resource function is already gonna is going to turn our JSON object into a JavaScript object. Um, or that JSON document or JSON string into a JavaScript object and pass that into our success function. And so now we can turn that into a new task. And then there's an error, of course, we reject on that error, okay? And then um, if now we make that request and we say we wanna do call save and we're gonna pass in the task. Now this is on success. We're, talk we're talking now about passing in this task. 
So this value here, this object, is what we test here, and that's what we pass here, okay? And of course, give me a promise on success, do all these things, right? And return. Now, what we need to go make sure is that we have a method called save on our resource. And so when we're creating something, this is update, update this is insert or post. So we know when we're doing a, a create or we're saving something, it's, it's um, a post that we're doing. So we can either leave this as insert or change it to save and then go over here and change this to insert. But if we want to use the word save, we can leave save there. But I like insert. It's more consistent with how you might use, think of a database. So I'm going to say insert there. Delete, same thing again. You know, here's an ID. Check that out. This ID is a string. Um, well, ng that is string ID. Well, it's not a string. Return invalid ID for deletion. So we know that the way we go for delete a task, it is going to be a string. That is because um, if it is not a string, so if it, this is, so if it is string, is through, not true is false. So uh, if a string is false and not of that is true. So okay, so if it's not a string, good, uh, return, right? Because we want our, we know our ID has to be a string, right? And the reason why is because it's that JSON, um, it's going to be the MongoDB ID, which is going to have characters and numbers, and it's not just a number. So we want to make sure it's a string. All right, so if it's not a string, then reject it. Otherwise, if it is a string, then what do we do on success? Well, on our success doesn't get any call back from, you know, the resource doesn't inject anything, or we don't accept anything. If it's successfully deleted, what is there to do? But if it's rejected, we want the rejected error, right? And then again, we call delete on our resource, and we pass it this object, which is ID colon ID. Now ID here is this ID, and then the property is ID. And we create a promise and we do all that good stuff. And if we go back to our resource, we better have a delete method, and there is our delete method. And that object that it accepts is how we bind to this, right? Where we tell um, ng resource when we created this, look, if I'm giving you an object to pass to the back end or work with, bind the ID field in it, in that object, object I give you, to the ID here. So this ID is here, and this gets populated by... So that's all she wrote for the DAO. And we're going to start off next in the next video by injecting our DAO and model into our controller and then using that to populate our view. So, see you in the next video. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and subscribing. Bye.